536, 439, wait, that doesn't make sense, 436, 437, oh, oh hey, just do my blacksmith exercises here before we get started on making this torsion bar from a Chevy truck into a double bit throwing axe, so pumped, here we go. Okay, so I just finished sketching this up. I actually spent almost no time I'm going really loose. Basically, this is the shape I want for the ax. It's just gonna be, I want it to be really smooth in this way, like a really nice curve, as well as matching it on this side. I'm gonna be relatively loose on my overall dimensions, but I mean, that's essentially what we're looking for. So I'm gonna uh, just quickly do some numbers on how much material I need to start without that torsion bar. It's about inch and a half round, so we'll just figure it out. Chuck it in the forge and then we'll get it squared up, get the hole in it, and get this thing done. Hopefully it's not gonna be too much drama today, except for the intro. Okay, let's do it, here we go. Okay, so I just got that shape all made into the preform for ready to slice the hole in it and make it into the ax. Happy with that. That's cooling off. I realized that I actually don't have the drift that I need to make this hole for this double bit ax. It's got the taper on both sides. If you don't know, a drift is just the piece of steel that you push through to shape the eye. So anyways, I'm gonna grab a piece of steel. It's actually the same steel that we're making the ax out of that half inch round torsion bar and I'm gonna chuck it in the forge. Never made one before, but I'm hoping that I can just literally like, whoop, squish it down and pull it out, and that'll be the drift. So let's do that while that's cooling off, and then we'll review right back here. So I got the drift made up here, went okay. I was going along as I realized how wide this thing's getting. I decided to forge in this basically handle, it's just round bar. I know that's something that Mr. Hoffman does 
for when he makes his dress for the axes. And well, hey, if anybody's gonna know what to do, Tim, he's the best in the business. So anyways, we're gonna try it the first time. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so I'm just gonna grind this and then ready to get into the action of this thing. I'm so pumped. Oh, so like yesterday, I was working away, fixing the old 93 Toyota 4Runner. Got a unique relationship with this thing. So anyways, I was working away, I was replacing the rad. So I was bending underneath, straining the fluid and gonna take off a hose. And I'm like, oh, my hat's starting to fall off. So I go like this to grab it. And of course, me clumsy Tim, he bumps it off, boom! Hat falls right in the whole entire container of the old antifreeze. Oh. So I took it home, took it right in the shower with me and gave her the old scrub down. But, uh, I think it's seen better days, so I may be looking for a new hat, unfortunately. If you know of any hats that would be cool to wear, let me know in the comments below so I can get a new hat. It's gotta be black, because this is a blacksmith shop. It's not black, it's gonna end up black. Anyways, let's get this forge going. So this is where we're at. Um, I've pretty much got my dimension this way and that's what I was really hunting for with this. That big old drift is a monster to run through it, but it's working really good. Um, I still have reserve in that I can push the drift in further. I still got a little bit more material than I want in here. Usually I like to get things a little bit more crisp and clean before I start drawing out the bit or the blade. But because of this one's gonna be curved in here like this, I'm gonna be grinding this out and the same on this side. At this point, I'm gonna just go in and get that, start drawing this out, and just kind of play with everything as we go. So, optimistic at this point, but we'll keep going and see how we go.
Okay, so I got the forging done here. This is just on the cool down. Um, it's a little bit rougher than I was hoping in here, but for the value of time, as this is one off axe, I'm just gonna let it cool off and then we're gonna lay it out and do the grind on it. I think I've got all the material where I need to be. So looking forward to seeing that come along. A little uh, pro tip from Tim is uh, sometimes when you're hammering the drift in, I'm just gonna put this down, actually back in the forge. If you're hammering a drift in, for example, in this axe, and I, you don't have a bottom, you don't have a bottom bolster to catch the axe profile, because if you just hammer it on flat, it just gnaws up the bottom. Anyways, you get the drift going in, and then you just grab the hot piece of steel and just start hammering it upside down on the drift. It's essentially then turning the axe, the part you're forging, into a hammer, and it pushes the drift in without having to make any special tooling. So on one-off projects, it's a nice little trick to have. Anyways, we're gonna let that cool off, grind it out, and then we're gonna hopefully be ready for the heat treat. Here we go. Shaving, you know, kind of the only problem is I actually don't have any beard to shave. I wish I could grow a beard. Someday maybe, probably not though. Not holding my breath for it. But anyways, got this baby sharpened up, ready to go. So I'm just gonna make a handle and we are done. Super looking forward to seeing this done. This is just turning out very, very cool. Super stoked on those lines. Yes, please. Okay, so the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. I've got the handle prepped, slot in it, got my wedge all set up, ready to go in here. So now I'm just gonna dry assemble this, and we're ready to go for the wedge. I always get nervous, because you never know you've got it good until that wedge sits down and you're golden. So we're gonna do that right now. Grab my safety glasses, you never know. Okay, so this 
baby's dry fitted. I'm just gonna get set up to put the wedge in now. It's coming though, it's coming. a load of stress off my plate. Got the wedge in, it is a real double bit axe now and I am super pumped on how this thing turned out. I just need to trim that off and oil it up and this thing is ready to get to work. Oh, and sand the bottom here. To tell you the truth, this thing is scary, like, wow. Don't know that I wanna throw that thing, my goodness. So I'm just gonna jump on here and quickly trim this off, trim the bottom and oil it up, and then we'll go to our closing sequence photo so you can see this thing. Uh, just in case I don't see you before the end, I really appreciate you watching this video and sticking it out to the end. This is an awesome project. I'm really glad to have you along. If you're new to the channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and uh, come back for the next build. I have no idea what we're building, but we'll build something. So let's go finish this thing off, that'll be that. Maybe it doesn't look big on camera, but when you know how sharp that is and how close that is to all your important stuff, I would hate to throw it and just see it like, sp yeah, splinter, like, pff, handle's gone. You could totally do it, but you'd probably kill yourself. No, it just go like this. Yeah. The blade isn't even close to me. But how do you throw accurately? Well, you have it like this, and then yeah. you have it in your head how you have to throw it so it tumbles through the air, and then it's well, I better finish it up, hey? Okay, let's do that. It's not even finished yet. We're so excited about the accident. I know. <laughs> Let us know if you want to see Martin and I learn to throw an axe at something. I don't really want to do it because I'm scared. Martin's fearless. But anyways, let us know when it comes below.